Hi, Big Video Peak here. In this video, I'm gonna show you an effect very useful to add action to time lapses, which are in need of some extra action. It is often called the Ken Burns effect, and it consists of uh, zooming, panning, tilting, of a mixture of all these techniques. So, if you want to spice up your time lapses, stay tuned. Photography and video are two very different disciplines. Photography is finding the right moment. Video is all about movement. Certain situations contain enough action to make them interesting for footage. But in other cases, when there is not much going on, video just doesn't work, and it would rather look like a 15 second photo. Very boring. That's why time lapses are so popular. They allow to add plenty of movement to situations that would otherwise be too static to make an interesting video. Especially for establishing shoots, the one I call dynamic postcards. But sometimes, even in time lapses, there are situations where we wish there was more movement. As an example, when I took this time lapse of the famous Seven Sister Cliff area in southern England, I was very disappointed by the complete lack of clouds in the sky, so I was ready to pack up and go to the pub. But then I decided to do it, trying to capture the movement of the waves. But there is still a definite lack of movement. I could certainly replace the sky, and I will show you how to do it in a future video. But an easier and very effective way is to add a zoom and or pan effect in post-processing, also known as Ken Burn effect. This effect was actually originally developed to animate still images, but it also worked very well for footage and time lapses. My time lapse workflow at the moment consists mostly of Lightroom coupled with LR Time Lapse 5, an excellent app specifically optimized for time lapses working in pair with Lightroom. I will certainly do one or more videos dedicated to LR Time Lapse in a few weeks. You can also apply some simple pan and zoom effect, but for this video I will use After Effects for applying the Ken Burn effect. If you're using Premiere Pro, Final Cut, or most of other video editing software, the workflow should be similar. The main thing to keep in mind when performing this effect is resolution. The more pixel you have to start with, the more room for zooming and eventually panning. Keep in mind that if you're encoding in 4K, you will need to end up with 8 million pixels. Most of today's cameras have at least 16 million pixels, so there should be still a relatively good room to spare according to the kind of camera you're using. If you're encoding in full HD, you will have no problem at all. We will be working now with 8K files shot with an Nikon D850 with a huge resolution of 45 million pixels, so there is practically no limits in what we can do. The same kind of effect is often also used for interviews or talking ads, as a, a static image of somebody talking can become quickly very, very boring. So let's have a look of how to achieve this effect. After having color graded, managed the transition and the flicker in LR Time Lapse 5, here we are in After Effects, ready to apply the Ken Barn FX. As you can see, we have our time lapse loaded in the timeline as a composition. In my case, it appears in brown because I have applied some changes and made a, a precomp. Normally it would appear with a blue label, but don't worry, it makes no difference at all. Let's twirl open the comp using the arrow on the left, and we access a series of parameters that we can modify. In our case, we only need to act 
on scale and in some cases position. Make sure that the playhead is at the beginning of the timeline. This can also be done by pressing home on the keyboard. Now let's click on the stopwatch to the left of position and scale. This will insert a keyframe for each of the relative values at the current position of the playhead. In other words, we are saying, please kindly start the time lapse with this zoom level at this position. Now let's press end on the keyboard to bring the playhead at the last frame. We want to go for a quite gentle zoom in and the pan toward the right to end up with London skyline in the middle of the frame. So we insert a value for scale of 130. Then we reposition the image at the desired point by clicking and dragging while the move tool is active or by entering the numeric values in position or by scrubbing over and dragging. This is where the time lapse will end and After Effects will generate all the intermediate transitions for each frame. As you can see, two keyframes are automatically set for the two values in the new position as soon as the values are modified. Of course, it is possible to set as many keyframes we want in different points in the timeline, but in most cases, two are enough. As you can see, the result is a smooth zoom, panning slightly towards our chosen part of the image. It is possible to go for a more aggressive move or for a subtle one, but I would say that a zoom value of 130 is a good average point. We could of course go for the opposite effect, zooming out. In order to do so, we simply invert the values of the keyframe. If you need precision, you can just copy the numeric value for position and scale from the first keyframe to the last. Otherwise, we can just eyeball it. And this is the result. In this image, we have a very gentle panning obtained with a zoom value of 120. I do like very subtle panning moves, but this one would also work with a slightly faster action. We don't need to start our movement at the very beginning of a clip. Let's say that in this 12 second clip, we would like to have a static period of 2 seconds at the beginning, then make the move in 8 seconds, and finally keep the position for the last 2 seconds. All we have to do is to move the existing keyframes to the desired position. Let's bring the first two keyframe from the start point in the timeline to two seconds by selecting and dragging them. We're basically saying to hold that position until that point and then start the move. Let's also bring back the last two keyframe by two seconds. As you can see in the resulting time lapse, the movement will start after two seconds and is held in position in the last two. But also note that the speed of the panning is now increased because the same movement is performed in a smaller lapse of time. Let's try this time a tilting movement upwards. So first of all, let's zoom in the image quite deeply. With the playhead at the beginning of the sequence, let's enter a scale value of about 150. And let's position our image by centering the skyline and starting from quite low. The two values have been registered. We can press end to go to the last frame of the sequence. And uh, this time we simply move uh, the image downwards. We want to keep the same uh, horizontal position. So best way is to just move uh, the vertical position up to the desired point. And this is the resulting time lapse. Let's have a look to another few examples.
when zooming in, uh, we have a little bit more room for uh, more aggressive moves. In this case, we are going up to a, a scale of 200, which is, I would say, the limit of what we can achieve. For a dramatic movement. While panning, we should be a bit more subtle. In this case, this movement is made with a scale of 130, and in my opinion, it's fine. While this one is done at 150, and is a bit too much, but again, it is a matter of personal preference. I would suggest to use uh, this effect only in clips that really need some extra action. As an example, in this particular one, we have already a lot of things going on. And in my opinion, uh, adding uh, a panning uh, just makes confusion. Maybe zooming uh, will work more or less, but still in my opinion, it's not needed, but then again, it's a matter of personal taste. A word of advice. If you're making a collection of time lapses, use this effect sparingly. I often see short movies where this effect is applied in every single clip, and it becomes very quickly distracting and annoying. In coming videos, I will go much deeper in 8K time lapses. So, I would really suggest you to subscribe to my channel to make sure that you will not miss a part of the action. Come aboard! If you like this video, feel free to share it with your friends in social media and click the like button below. If you want to watch other tutorials about time lapses or Lightroom or Photoshop, you will find links on the screen. Bye for now!